I love her hair. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I am recording. I um, It is a, a, just about 11 o'clock here in Hawaii. Um, so I'm just going to make the introduction so we can get to the woman of the hour. <laughs> or hour yeah. and a half. <laughs> um, or endless coffee. I'm just joking. Or <laughs> when will this end? When will it end? <laughs> um, Which I Okay, so welcome to Crip Chat, um, where we are able to speak candidly about disability real talk, and I'm super excited to have um, our second guest host. Well, first of all, I want to thank Tylea for being our first guest host. Tylea, wave your hand. Woo! All right. <laughs> I should have come up with some sound effects on here. Um, I was just but uh, what, what did you want to say? I was just waving to Tylea. I am not Tylea. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. Um, Tylea, I, I think she did a great job. Um, so if anyone is interested, um, we did upload and her, uh, the crypt chat um, of her conversation last week on my youtube channel called one leg up productions if anyone wants to look at it it is not edited it is raw form so um, so you put speaks up on the on the same youtube that you do the one the interviews is that what you're saying yeah. okay so my youtube channel one leg up productions has all my all my media stuff um and so you can go there um, past crib chats I have edited down from like two hours to like 20 minutes, but I'm not doing that right now. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing the full fledged call raw where this is crib chat raw. <laughs> That's cool. And Pauline, I do edit too. So, you know, I actually have a lot of free time, you know, not, I mean, I things kind of pile up. I'm like, Oh, like this week I was like, Oh wait, I'm interviewing Tylea and I'm like doing the crypt chat. I was like, no, I actually have a lot of things going on this week, but usually it's just me doing it's my for me too. So yeah. I'm happy to edit things down. And one of the things I did want to talk about, I was wondering if it was cool for it when I edit things down if we could just see you know I know some people uh, like a person had a problem with that they, they didn't want what they were talking about shared so I was wondering what your thoughts were if we added those things down so we just cut out people that don't want you know aren't comfortable with what they're saying to be shared with the world what are your thoughts on that because I just think lots of people talk and there's, I don't know, I just feel like this is a good tool for use to, you know, speak out about the things, struggles we go through. So what are you, your thought on that? Yeah, so here's the thing. Um, Jessica was, I'm going to just recap because Jessica wasn't here last week. So it was brought to my attention um, last week that there are people that would love to be able to participate in Crip Chat, but they were concerned because it was recorded and they were concerned with confidentiality and, and some people expressed, um, and I appreciate, so appreciated what they expressed that like, yeah, I, I sometimes hold back on what it is I really want to say because it's recorded. And so that's, it's a real thing. And so um, being cognizant of that, what I have um, thought about is um, I, I do like the idea of recording our calls because I feel like it's documenting some amazing stuff, kind of like Camp Jeanette, right? And in, in a lot of the great, the good material that they used in Crip Camp was because they recorded. And um, with technology today, it's so easy to record. Um, and so I think for the basis of like having some sort of like time stamp in our, in our, the big world we're in, I think it's very cool to have. However, it doesn't always have to be used for marketing purposes. I think we could record it, have it on a, um, have it on my YouTube channel as unlisted and I can send it out to the group. The, mm -hmm. uh, I can send the replay out to the people on the subscriber list but it's not gonna go out in public. 
However, if like Priya, so I also want to like recognize Priya. She took it upon herself and volunteered to create an Instagram account for Crip Chat. So follow it. Uh, sign up for it, um, keep track on it, because um, Priya's handling that. And I think, if Priya, if you take the um, the link from the YouTube channel that's unlisted for the public, and you want to put it into like bite-sized pieces, knowing who it doesn't want to be um, in, in the public eye or not, then you can just not have them in those pieces of marketing or... Yeah, my partner was even like, you can even blur their faces. I was like, I don't think they care about their face. But I can ask. But I was, if I do that, I will send it to the group to make sure everyone is okay with it. Because I, of course, I want people to come here for whatever reason they're coming here. I, I mean, for me, it's like I want to connect with other people with disabilities. and really into the idea of fighting, you know, pushing our rights further. And this time right now, there's this huge wave of people just getting in, very interested in that. And so I think this is a time to start of pushing that, our agenda as disabled people up as well. And, and Ty Leanne, when I inter interviewed her in my DIY Able, I, I, at one of the questions I asked her was like, we're in, you know, it was Juneteenth yesterday. So I was like, <laughs> Juneteenth. And so I said, you know, and we're in this moment where the black community is so upset about what happened with George Floyd and rightfully so. But, you know, I asked her, do you think it's appropriate for, you know, people with disabilities to also talk about their struggle? Uh, well, they're a part of it. Disability doesn't make you not black or white. You know what I mean? Like, right? it's intersectional. I agree with Ivy. I mean. that. Yeah. So that's why. But, you know, I mean, people with disabilities are usually killed more. Yeah, yeah, and that's black like, people with disabilities. I, that's I was saying, and you know, Tylea kind of talked about how she's half Hispanic, half African American, and disabled, and it's a frightening world for her because of that. And you know, so I do think it's important to talk about this. So that's kind of why I just want to maybe take some little bites about you know, if someone says something really like that's I don't know. Yeah, that, that represents something that the disability community feels or part of the disability community feels. I think it's great. I think, I think, uh, I mean, like, I am happy to turn over the reins to you to chop up the videos however you want to chop up. And what I could do is in the next, um, or I could actually set out a separate um, Crip Chat email to everybody that's on the subscriber list and ask them, can you please respond do you um are you um comfortable being recorded for marketing purposes or um would you prefer things be kept confidential and then we'd have a list of people who prefer yeah. not to be on um right yeah. rather than asking permission every time you create a link where people's face don't want to be associated with it at all but you know i think that's like a group email that you could probably send and then, you know, maybe later share, but you know, we can figure that out. But I just wanted to talk about that right now, because, you know, doing this, I'd maybe I'd like to use parts of this conversation for Crip Chat and DIY Able. This is what I'm doing. Yeah, absolutely. I'm all for cross promotion, promote promoting. So Kylea, if you see like from last week when you guest hosted, if you see, um, like a, a segment in that that you wanted to cut out and use for stomping on CP or as part of your radio, like, hey, I want to play this this um, snippet or excerpt from this conversation we had with Crip Chat on the radio, and let's oh, talk about it on the radio. I was actually going to talk to you about that, whether I could discuss Crip Chat on my radio station and take certain clips from so absolutely please please take one of your quotes and everybody else's quotes and make my quote of the day because you know i share quotes on my radio show and that airs on fridays at 11 o'clock eastern time at letgoradio.net sorry i had to plug myself <laughs> <laughs> that's just, you know when you get in that mode that's just what you when you're like talking and doing activists and you're like constantly 
And by the way, this is what I'm doing. And don't make sure you tune in. <laughs> and every Monday, a chair trap is released. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It feels like weird to do that, but but you know that's how people know what's going on. So you have to. Well, and and we're you know if we are really we want to put where our mouth you know walk the talk walk you know ah uh, I don't even know what I'm saying. But if we say we're in this community together, that means we champion each other and we support each other in every aspect, whether it be personal or business. So I'm all for self promoting. You go, girl. Tylee and Flores on the radio Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on what is it? Let go radio dot net. Let go radio. Look at look at her. Let go radio dot net. And Priya with DIY abled. And this is a good segue because Priya Ray with DIY DIY abled is guest hosting today. Um, and Yay. I have had the pleasure of getting to know Priya through Crypt Chat, and it has been such a blessing on my life. She is someone that I feel I can have honest conversations where I'm not judged, and um, that even if our opinions don't necessarily align or agree, that you can respect each other and be okay with that because there's space in this room for everybody and we don't all want to think alike because then our world would just be robots you'll never right? learn anything there. so well, yeah like let's talk about abraham lincoln you know the the god i forget her name i love her the woman that's wrote this book the uh something of rivals and talks about abraham and lincoln how he picked a person that agreed with him on purpose because one day after someone questioned what his perspective was that you know that's just the right right so uh, yes so um i so appreciate our like you being part of crypt chat priya and i so appreciate our friendship um and so Yay. thank you um, I'm going to ask everybody if they're not, um, like, just so, um, again, for, we were just talking about, like, taking snippets from it. When people talk over each other, it, it, it cancels out one person. So we just want to be cognizant that we're not talking over each other. And so I'm going to put myself on mute and let R Priya take it away. I don't know, what, however you want to, like, however you want to facilitate it. And just let me know if um, if there's anything I can do to support you. So uh, I'm gonna put myself on mute while I'm not talking. And Priya, welcome. And thank you. It's so awesome to see you. Thank you all for coming, Denise. I'm so glad you were able to make it because you were like worried. You yeah. have to meet your brother. I think my brother is coming tomorrow. He came for a little while. He got a job offer in. Um, Monterey. Awesome. So I'm really excited for him. And he he's working right now in Costa Mesa um doing the um COVID testing for people. Oh, so cool. right after that he's gonna go to Monterey and start up with them. Oh <laughs> that's firemen. Cool. Oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah, that's I guess I'm going to do this because I know the winds. So where's Tylea? Where is she? Oh, there you are. All right. So let's, who wants to do their huh. this week? But since, you know, there's not that many of us. I do. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. So over the past week, so many great things have happened. I have to say being interviewed by Priya was one of the highlights of my week. And also this week I got a message on Instagram from the Hearing Project and um, Chica's um, Disabled Talk and they invited me to be a part of their panel next week. Talk yeah, about police and reform. Woman was actually on the Crip Chat for a second because she her name, that girl, Mariella, remember? She was here for, but she had to go do something else. But continue. 
But yeah, so they found me through Miss Priya, Miss B. Y. Abel, the Queen, and they invited me to talk about police reform on their panel. So that's what I'll be doing next week on Wednesday. Yay! That's awesome. Jessica, how about you? Thanks. Oh, I'm just gonna say congratulations. Yeah, that's awesome, Tylea. Okay, go for it, Jessica. Oh, you, me? Or do you well, know? I just thought. I, um, sure, I could, I could share. I was um, 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 New Mobility Magazine did a profile on, a new user profile on me uh, that it was published this week. So I was really excited about that because I can promote, um, you know, Canine Companions for Independence and Miss Wheelchair. So it's a great opportunity for me. Yeah, that's totally awesome. Congratulations on that, too. And uh, Denise, this, your brother, your brother is a win coming close to you. So what else is going Do you have any wins for your week this week? Um, well, he's kind of, um, it's kind of been off and on because, like, he said it was coming up this weekend to bring my car down, but actually he, um, he, he just got a job offer in, um, in Monterey, but he can't start that until he finishes up with his COVID thing, so I'm very proud of him for that, and yeah, so I didn't know that yeah. I would be on because I didn't know he would wouldn't be here today so he's not here today so i'm on today so yeah, and i'm glad i saw something on social media like something about a cast or something that you didn't have to wear anymore is that was that yeah, you um, i um i don't have to, i went to the doctors and i i found out that i could go swimming let me show you my cast it's um black and um I have to I had to wear it, um all through my um recovery it's for my my foot not turning um in when I sleep because I don't know where my foot position is gonna be when I sleep so um last week I was able to go to the doctor and um, find out um, I can drive now, um, and I don't have to wear this thing anymore. Yay, so that's, that's good news. I think that's a win. <laughs> I think that's a yeah, win. Yeah, that is a win. I'm so happy. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just been um, recovering. I still can't go on the beach because I can't um, be on um, uneven surfaces. Right. And the sand is not really even. <laughs> right. Not like walking on... Um, it's not like walking on no cement. concrete or anything. Right. Yeah, so I can't... So that's the only thing I can't do. And yesterday I was able to go swimming for the first time, so that was really neat. I found out that a lot of my muscles are really sore, like I used to be able to um, hold my hand, hold my, um, my arm above my head for like a long time, and now it's like really sore when I move my arm to swim so yeah so well, it's that's... been sore I have to work out muscles that I haven't been able to work out mostly well that's so. a good soreness you know it's like soreness from like working it out so yeah so it's it's more about like I didn't work that out for like seven months so naturally it's gonna be sore you know but yeah I'm I'm hopefully I'll get those muscles 
working again and working out again. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure that's going to happen. You just got to work on it. And Ivy, do you have any wins? Is she there? Does she hear me? Do you hear me? Oh, yeah, I've been muted. Well, business is kicking up, if you can count that. I'm going to New York tomorrow for a picture, a photo shoot with some friends and one of the, someone they know. Cool. We need headshots. What do you do, Ivy? Oh, I do photography and art freelance. Thank you. Cool. And then, Renee, do you have any wins this week that you want oh. to talk about? Jeez. Um, I hadn't, I knew I should have thought about this. Um, <laughs> my wins are mostly like, because uh, of my age and what's going on with me, it's like about not doing things more than doing things. Like, mm. I, Discovered, there's a group called um, Chronic Pain Anonymous that does 12 steps based on um, the 12 step program. Anyway, mm -hmm. they had this uh, this uh, formula for how to deal with um, overdoing it, which is my problem with pain. A lot of it. Right. So um, it's like you you average out uh, for for whatever activity it is, even if it's sitting. Like, is it 30 minutes or 15 minutes or 60 minutes? Anyway, you do your average three times, three of them, average the three, then subtract 15%. And that's supposed to give you the time that you need to be doing your activity before you take a break. And for people like me, it means putting a clock, like right in front of our face, and forcing myself to move into a different direction, a different or go to the bathroom, whatever it is, for me it was a it was a win because I did my writing on the computer, which is always the thing that dry, it drives my neck and arms crazy by the end of the day. So it looks like forty minutes is the thing right now. I mean, it does get in the way. I don't think I wrote as much as I usually do, but I didn't have the pain, so yeah. that's a win, huh? Which I so think my wins are weird. I mean, like I said, it's like my wins are like about not doing things rather than doing things. <laughs> well, I think Ron was kind of talking about that last week, like how he lost, you know, he wheelchairs are like having kind of advantage when, you know, when he would like go hiking or something, he would come back in pain. But then when he actually used the wheelchair, he did the stuff, but he wasn't in that much pain because he was actually using a wheelchair. So, you right. know. So it's counterintuitive because we would think, ooh, how's that a win? You're going into a wheelchair. You know, but so that, exactly, exactly. So, okay. But okay. next week I'll try to think more deeply about it and try to come up with something. Okay. That's cool. That was good. I, I appreciate that. I thought that was good. And then, Pauline, how about yourself? How about you? What, did, what was your win this week? Um, well, well, first, before I go into mine, Renee, I talked in the chat about Dragon Naturally Speaking. It's a speech-to-text software um, that allows you to speak into the computer so you don't have to type. Oh, that's what I've been looking for. The last one I bought, I couldn't figure out. So th this is a good one? Okay. Yeah, I really enjoy can, it. Can I tell you something about that? I took a class on that. And, you gotta um, take a class, huh? It depends on what version you get, because I have the one that's built into my computer already. Uh, Is that easy I, to use? Yes, yeah, very easy. Community college on that, and if you have any type of speech impediment, like I do, sometimes um, it doesn't really recognize your voice. And it was really frustrating taking the class because she had to like alternate her class to fit my needs. And I don't know, for, for me, it didn't really help me because it would print out like stuff that I wasn't saying and it was really frustrating. Can I, can, I, can I just say something, Denise? You're not the only one that had that problem, even with your speech impairment. Like one time I was writing something and it put almighty penis. It did what? It put, instead of putting what I like to do is write, it put almighty penis. <laughs> your eyes. 
<laughs> and luckily I looked before I turned in my assignment or else my teacher would have been like, he like <laughs> almighty penis? <laughs> oh, you, wow. You guys That's know, nice. does that work on, like, say you were doing your emails or you're cruising the internet? Can you use that for that or is yes, it only? All of it. Can? Yeah, it's for everything. Yeah. I gotta so, figure that out. So, Renee, for you, your voice would work well with Nat Dragon Naturally Speaking, and I would highly suggest you checking it out. Doing you that? have to think a little bit differently. Like, you, like you would have to speak like this, period. And then, comma, we go on to the... That's comma. weird. But yeah. you know, I actually do that a lot on my iPhone because it's hard for me to type out things. And But, but it is weird because you say period, and then sometimes when I leave them, that's trippy. <laughs> blah, 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 period. I'm like, oh, my God. I didn't mean to say that. On. But, of course, I don't say that on the message. But I don't know. I think that... And they'll be like, oh, she probably uses the voice. <laughs> but you could, you it, could. It's like, how about cutting and pasting? Can you do that? Yes. yes. Okay, so I just have to learn how to use it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, uh, her time. Um, uh, um, I was just wondering, um, do you have any experience with PowerPoint, Colleen? Yes. Because. Does PowerPoint do like talking as well, or well, anything that you're gonna do is text. You can speak it in, um, but yeah. yeah, we can talk offline if you want to private message me that. Oh, cool! Does it too, right? I was asking. Okay, Pauline. So, so uh, my wins. <laughs> my wins. Um, uh, I have one professional. Hey guys, I'll be right back. I'm getting a call. I'll be right back. Okay, cool. Okay. So I have one professionally and one personally. So one per professionally, um, I do a belief breakthroughs course. Um, it's a six week online course. We just, and every week um, a module is released and then I meet with them um, uh, on a Zoom call like this to help coach them or, you know, with the, with the materials. So um, just, we're in our fifth week this past week and the breakthroughs that people are having is so great to see and it lights me up to see people putting the work in and um seeing the results and the fruits of their labor and that i get to be a part of that journey so i'm excited about that and we're going to come up on our final week of the course so um it'll be good because so i'm trying to think of like what's a cool way i can like make it like almost like a graduation so i'm thinking that through for next week um and then personally i just i did a little bit of work in the morning yesterday and then i just took the day and went with my family we went up to this ranch in the north part of the island it's so beautiful if you're friends with me on instagram um not on one leg up productions but pauline victoria ahi or pauline ahi on instagram my personal page um, I posted some pictures and it's just like they have horses and sheep and it's just so beautiful up there. And then we went out to eat and it was so fun <laughs> sit in a restaurant and laugh and it was just a good time. So it just refueled okay. my spirit. Well, that's nice. I guess what I'll talk about my way, cause it'll kind of transition into why I do what I do. Um, I'm in a band and Last summer, um, we usually play this fest place called in Chattanooga, Tennessee. They do a fest every year, and we played. And this man came up to me and was joking. I, my band was joking, like, "Oh," and he's like, "Oh, I heard this next band's not that great." And I thought, I don't know if he was joking or not. I was like, "Oh yeah, they suck. They're the worst band ever." And I, it was my. <laughs> Was joking around, and then he like was like, "Hey, you know, I just had a stroke, and I'm kind of nervous about going up and standing in front. I don't want to get knocked over." And I was like, "Oh no, what?" And then this is what I now this is how I've always been, even before I became disabled. But I was like, "Oh my God, let find you a chair. I'm gonna find you a chair." And then I went in, and I 
Robert's, my partner's like setting up all the equipment. I was like, Robert, there's a man that had a strip. Hey, he needs a chair. We, we need to get him a chair. And Robert was like, what? Then one of the organizers was like, oh, I'll get a chair. And then they came and told me, okay, I put a chair right next to the stick. I went and got him. And I was like, oh, look, they got a chair for you. I'll take you to it. And, and I was like, here, you could just sit here and watch the band. So I sat there. So I actually invited him to come to this. So I wrote him. I hadn't, you know, we've written each other a few times back and forth. But I wrote him. I was like, oh, you know, I'm doing this script chat. You know, you know, you should come. I think you would enjoy it. And then he wrote me back and he was said, uh, he was like, Priya, he's like, oh, thanks for remembering me. He's like, and I just want to tell you I'm doing better. I'm, you know, through exercise, I've gained strength. And he goes, and that night that I met you was the first time I had gone out a stroke and I was feeling really insecure and scared. And I'm so indebted to you for the rest of my life for doing that for me, like, because I was like really frightened to go out and you like made sure I had a good time. So that was like, made me so happy. I was like, yay. And, and that's why I do what I do basically. Cause I want people of disabilities to not be afraid to enter into a community that might not be accessible and not be afraid to like say, Hey, I'm disabled. I want to take part. How can I take part? And, you know, not feel the fear of going up to people. So that's why I started. So I'll just introduce myself. I'm Priya Ray. Um, I became disabled in 1999. I fell through a half pipe, which is basically a um, skateboard thing. I don't skateboard, so I'm going to call it a skateboard thing. But I'm, you know, I'm sure everyone's seen it. It's like like in an arc and skateboarders like skate back and forth and wheelchair users actually do that too, that too not just skateboarders. And so um, these guys had built one in their warehouse and I fell through and I became disabled and I did a recovery in my parents' house, which I was, you know, really fortunate. I had parents that, and my partner who completely supported me during that time period to help me get adjusted to how I would live as a disabled person. And then I kind of thought about what I wanted to do. And I decided I just wanted to keep making art and play music as I had done before. I didn't feel like because I had become disabled, I should have to change what I really love doing. And then when I, you know, finally was able, like about two and a half to three years after I had my injury, I was finally able to get back into this community that I was a part of. But then I realized they weren't really that accessible and they didn't think about it really. And I think because of my personality, a lot of people forget I'm in a wheelchair and they'll be like, oh, will your band come and play? Or will you come here and take part in this? And then I'm like, you know, I'll have to be like, are there stairs? Like, you know, and I just feel like I shouldn't have to ask that, but I, you know, I, you know, it's like really, you know, it's made me realize like, and then, you know, I kind of learned about the disability rights movement and realized how I didn't actually even know about any of that, even though I had a disabled mother, it kind of like didn't really set in with us about the disability movement. My mom had her disability in 1968. She had rheumatoid arthritis. So I think, because we just had learned how to live with her, you know, live life and figure out her disability with my dad. And, you know, me and my brother were little, but my dad, you know, really helped a lot. And so we just never thought about the, and you know, my dad made, you know, pretty good living. So as far as paying for things and he had really good insurance because he worked for universities, he didn't, we didn't have to worry about, all the stuff that I have to worry about actually. So, um, so we just never really even thought about the ADA and how it, what, you know, was from, I mean, it, you know, like the curb cuts and all that came, but it, we just never talked about it. We just weren't ever like, Oh, your mom can do this because the ADA is there and this is how, so it was just something we never, so that, you know, after I, 
you had my disability and I started going into the community that I wanted to be a part of, I, that I realized like how invisible people with disabilities are in our world and how our history is invisible to the world. And that really upset me. So I was really happy to see Crip Camp because that was like part of my talks where I talked about the 504 sit-in and the Capitol Crawl. And it, like people just didn't know about it. People were like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah, this is like what happened. And the 504 sit-in, by the way, is the longest sit-in period for any human to have done in America, but I think it was 29 days, it was the longest sit-in that had ever existed, period, whether you're disabled or not disabled. So I, you know, shout out to our community that we had the longest sit-in in America with disabilities, which I think is very impressive because as disabled people, we all know what it would be like if we had to take part in a sit-in it would be difficult for us because we have all you know varying varying ability you know problems with you know not i don't want to say problems but varying things like taking medications bathroom usage some people needing catheters like these types of things that go on with disabilities so you know the fact that so many people with disabilities did that sit in is just you know an incredible feat in its own and that they were the people that did it the longest is also really great. So I want to start this. I mean, we can talk about advocate, advocating in different areas. Um, I just think society in general is one area. Then, you know, for people with disabilities, the medical world, advocacy in the medical world, or adv social advocacy, like just like how to deal with friends who just aren't getting what's going on but you know i don't know what what would what would y'all like to start with like should we just go with society or i don't know i mean i could talk about all three and so, so I would just um so i i feel like um no matter what environment we I, find ourselves first, in, what? go ahead oh i saw popped up I said friends but go ahead Sorry um I feel like no matter in what no matter what space that we're advocating advocating is advocating like advocacy That's is in itself advocacy <laughs> like it doesn't matter where you're whether you're in a doctor's appointment or within your friends group or within Walmart like it advocacy is advocacy and I feel like in general I, I, I would be interested in hearing how other people <laughs> have advocated for themselves or different stories and maybe it wasn't about yourself it was about like you saw somebody do something or maybe you were advocated to like you were had to be had to be set Ooh. right right like someone else advocated to you on behalf of themselves and you're like oh i didn't even like right so just because we're the disabled ones doesn't mean we can't also have be, advocate each other be advocated by somebody else right like well, because, you know, disabilities are all different. So if we're like just focused on our own disability, we're not realizing what someone else might have a problem with. But um, I'll just like to start and with go around with everyone and maybe talk about uh, something that they have to either advocate for or maybe something that happened to you and you didn't know how to advocate. And um, I don't know, let's start. Oh, who is that? Um, Jewel. Oh, Jewel. Hi. This is my long term. I We've never met in person, but we've been friends on social media for so long. And she actually had a spinal injury and she lives in Miami where I'm from originally. So I'm so happy to see you, Jewel. Why don't you introduce yourself? Can you, you want to do that? All right. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi. I'm glad I'm finally, I've been wanting to come to one of these meetings for, for weeks. I've been trying. So, and I, I'm finally, I'm here and I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited. Yay. Um, Yay. Do you want to so. just tell them about yourself and what you, 
you do, you, you make art and stuff. So go ahead. I don't want to talk. Sure. Um, my name's Jewel. Um, I'm 37 years old. I was hurt 11 years ago in a swimming pool accident. Um, it was, it was just a total accident. Someone jumped on my head and they didn't see me uh, while I was swimming and I got a C4 spinal cord injury. Um, but I'm still here. So I'm happy. Um, uh, I, uh, I do like just to make extra money. I do, um, vintage and uh, collectible sales. I've been doing that for like 20 years. And then um, I also do a, I started um, a few months ago, a, um, a zine um, on ableism, um, art against ableism or artists against ableism. And I'm trying, I'm currently working on that now just to uh, find the humor and, you know, empowerment through humor in the disability community. So that's kind of what it's the that's kind of where I'm going with it and I've I've had a lot of uh, uh, contrib uh, contributions from people who are not disabled people who are disabled um, just uh, submitting art that is uh, disability related but but makes it so it's accessible to everybody it's beautiful and it's different and so I'm hoping that that all comes together at some point but, I'm so happy to be here. Hey, well, I'm, I was uh, like, right when you joined, I was asking everyone to share a story of where maybe they have to advocate for themselves or they didn't, but didn't know what to do maybe. So do right. you want to start? <laughs> Since you're already talking. To them. Yeah. Um, honestly, what inspired me to do this, this zine um, um, against ableism was, um, a person I was seeing for seven years and uh, I, you know, uh, I was engaged uh, to this person and after seven years, he told me that it, he wanted someone that could hold his hand like a normal person and hug him like a normal person. And it was a shock, obviously, you know, because I never, that, the, the acceptance and the, or the fact that he didn't accept me never crossed my mind. So it was really uh, weird for someone that I thought loved me to, to, uh, to express those kinds of feelings towards me. And I've never been, I've never been personally, uh, you know, uh, faced ableism personally. So it was something that was just thrown right at me. And um, from that, I, I decided that I wanted to, turn it into a positive uh experience you know and that person's out of my life now and i'm so happy and hopefully that the this scene that that is coming out soon um will kind of share spread you know kind of joy and make people smile and you know kind of being able to laugh at yourself is the ultimate empowerment to me especially in the disability community. So that's kind of my focus. So that's, that's where I've, that was my first instance of ableism personally. So that was the first thing that came to mind. But oh, I've never told anyone that. So I'm glad that I got to tell. I'm glad <laughs> I to tell well, I'm glad, you know, that's what this space is for to be able to talk about these things and, you know, and I'm glad, I, you know, like a zine is a great, tool like i also made zines because i got tired of telling people like hey parking spots and yeah. you know mm -hmm. part of the diy community so i made a zine about you know out, out of my frustration of people inviting me and to ask my band to play without thinking like oh there's a we should prius coming we should figure this out so i just made instead of constantly telling people about it i'm like here have the zine <laughs> yeah like Spread literature. It's like if it's in writing, it actually happened. If you say it, it never happened. That's what it seems like uh, these days. So a lot. Um, okay. Um, can I ask? Uh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's okay. It's can just... I? If it's okay, can I delve deeper a little bit, Jewel? Yeah. Because it's one thing to be experience ableism from a stranger, mm -hmm. than to experience ableism from someone you're in a 
deep, intimate relationship with. Right. And so I, I mean, I don't know how long ago this was. It doesn't sound like that long ago, but. It was, um, it was a few months ago. It was about, uh, it was about three months ago. I like, if I were you, my eyes would still be swollen from like crying. <laughs> but, I, still, I still, I still cry because I feel stupid that I was, that uh, I was just, I, I've misjudged someone so much. And I think that's more why I get upset because I'm like, you know, how, how could I be so dumb, you know, that, that I didn't see this or that I, I don't know. I felt angry that I was, that I thought that he was a different person. So. Well, and I would encourage you not to take on that responsibility. Like that's his mm -hmm. shit. Um, yeah. But I am curious, like, how do you, like, I mean, it, it, the reality of it is we may all, like Ivy wrote friends, like, so um, being in positions where we're close to people, like people that we're close to are showing ableism and, and they don't even know it. And when they're, even when they're pointed, it's pointed out, they're denying it. Like, right. um, so like how, I'm just curious, what, like, how did you deal with that? Because that might help someone, someone of us here. Um. Well, I'm still dealing with it because unfortunately he's he still is in my life sort of because we own a home together. So he, you know, after the breakup and stuff, uh, he just left and he moved in with another person, you know, so I'm pretty sure that there was something going on, you know, while we were together. So um, that was also shocking too, because, you know, it's, it, it's not that we were in a relationship. It was like that we were best friends too. So it was like, it, it's hard to accept that this, that person that I thought he was is just, it, it wasn't him. You know, it's like seven years and I'm like, who, who was this person that I was, that I was spending all my time with, you know, it just seems like a waste, but you know, I'm still trying to look at the positive sides of it. And this scene actually is, very healing for me because I I feel like it will it will help people get through a similar situation because I know that this stuff like this does happen and I've heard about it happening in the, the disability community often you know can you explain ableism again Pauline or somebody Priya why don't you go ahead me? Oh, God, I hate. Um, well, ableism is essentially uh, being discriminatory for, against people because of their ability, so what they can do. So, oh, you know, so different levels of it. The ableism for Jewel was, you know, her partner saying these stupid things. <laughs> <It's so> stupid. <laughs> yeah. And then ableism can also be like the store owner that's just like you know isn't like making it accessible for you for disabled people to get in and stuff like oh, okay that. and most of the time ableism mm -hmm. isn't as like tangible like it I, like i feel like it, it's it's um this intangible invisible thing that exists but people don't realize it and i try to like so where i'm talking i'm in the process of um creating a workshop about ableism and able privilege and the idea that able privilege is not something like people are just born into privilege, right? You, it was nothing of your fault, just as much as you're born into not privilege. So it's not from a place of like blame, unless it's like that blatant, like Jules. Husband, I'm not gonna call him. Yeah. That. But right, but you know, it's it, it's just that like hidden, underlying. Um, uh, concept i guess or um thing that we a barrier that we have to deal with um mm -hmm. and it was I, was it okay if i share priya yeah of course okay. of course um so it was really interesting because like i've always talked about like ableism and able privilege and my husband makes fun of me and we have that relationship like we can joke with each other about stuff i'm not easily offended and so i'm like it totally exists he's like well I feel like you're ableist, but anyway, he'll go, he'll go back and forth. And yesterday we went to this restaurant and in the parking lot, there's only one disabled parking spot and it's open, but the car goes ahead of me 
and he parks in the parking disabled parking spot. So I pull up next to him because there's a spot right next to the disabled spot. I park right next to him and I roll down my window and I'm like, excuse me, um, do you need that spot? Because I need that spot because I have a ramp that needs to come down and I'm driving. So it's like, I feel like it's pretty obvious. Um, mm -hmm. And so he's like, oh, well, I'm just dropping off my bike. I'll, bike. I'll be like two minutes. And then I had to wait. Like his time was more precious. The fact that he was even in a spot that he was not legally allowed to be in there. But like, wow, like just that mind, like even in his mind, he may not have believed that he was ableist or able privileged, but he was. And I was so excited because my husband got to witness it firsthand. You're like, yes. <laughs> so, and then like, did you, did your husband tell him off? I was afraid he was going to. So I feel like I'm so appreciative of this conversation because I feel like I should have taken that opportunity to educate him and the store owner and the store owner to be like, Hey, you know, this is your customer. You need to say, Hey, this spot is not legally, this spot is not for you to drop off your bikes. You need to park, park in the spot, like five feet away. It, you just, you know, congratulations you have the ability to ride a bike and walk so use it but i didn't like i was just in shock and kind of went back into my own self of like oh i don't want to like move, make any waves and i don't want to like upset anybody i don't want it to turn into a fight you know like things can get out of control as we've seen in our country right now way fast and so it's almost yeah. like, more fearful of yeah, people are crazy these days. Yeah, people are, yeah, you don't want someone to, like, take it out wrong and, like, pull out a gun or something. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right, so, you know, I think it's interesting in our time right now where we're, everyone's saying, like, we need to change this and we need to fight for our rights. And then at the same time, though, it's backfiring on us. And so, yeah. Um, what it comes down to is like pure selfishness with people that have that that are like that that would just be like oh you know i'll be right back you know it's just pure narcissism it, they don't they're not even it's it's upsetting it's upsetting yeah. when i when i hear those things yeah and my husband did get out and he's like dude you know she can only park in one spot after he spent his five minutes in the store and i was waiting for him blocking mm -hmm. other cars right so it's this ripple effect that that selfishness has on our society um but yeah I, I you know i was like disappointed in myself that you didn't say anything or yeah. that like that i didn't say anything no like i wasn't more like advocating like i am an I advocate on this island and i sh what i should have done was i should have parked over a little bit more gotten out of my car so he could have a converse like i could have a conversation with him and be like hey maybe, maybe you could have blocked him in and said oh sorry five minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 that's true. but it's not like <laughs> but, <laughs> right right but right right yeah, you you like it. Like, <laughs> yeah but, you know, yeah, but I find it I find it hard, you know. Even though I believe in these things, you know, advocating for the our, our community, I find it hard to approach people too. Honestly, I do because I feel like they're gonna, I'm gonna get like, like that they're gonna yell at me or they're gonna that um so that it's gonna turn into a worse situation. So I don't. I sometimes most of the time I don't say anything, and I get mad at myself just like you, Pauline. I get mad afterwards because you're like, I would have said this and I would have said this and but yeah, it's yeah. hard. Yeah, I, I just also think you when you are an ath activist, um, you know, you're just living life and you just want to go do your thing and not actually right. <laughs> hey, right. I find like that the one you know, like the gym is closed now, but one of my big battle there was the one, yay they their accessible parking's just kind of a mess and they have one 
spot for a van and people are always you know you know people that are disabled always part you know they always go to that spot my partner's like oh it's because they don't get their car scratched and i was like really okay maybe that's why but you know but like i told him hey can you put up the thing because it didn't say van accessible like so they actually the ymca did that and then right before the pandemic i finally got someone like higher up that was like yeah we want to work with you and solve this problem with the parking and i was like yeah finally but then the pandemic happened the gym closed but it was really great because finally i had at the gym's ear to kind of consult about the parking and you know i had suggested maybe you because yeah, they send out a newsletter every month i was like maybe you should write about this in the newsletter so you know your patrons understand like hey this spot the lines is you know if there's other spots park in those spots because that's for people that have a lift or or a ramp or something so well and jessica had was oh sorry that, so sometimes i go to the gym and it would happen and i'd you know, and it was constantly like every time I go to the gym, I'm like saying, parking, parking. So sometimes you just want to go work out. You know, I'm in pain. I just want to go work out. I don't really don't want to have to, to tell anyone. So some days I just didn't say anything. And I'm, I was just like, God, I should have just said something. Why am I? But, you know, sometimes you're, you're we're all humans. <laughs> like, you know, we also have fears and insecurities of what, how things will pan out. So it's okay not to advocate, but I think zines are a really good thing. <laughs> I think zines are really awesome because then you just hand someone something and hopefully they'll read it and, you know, and then they become informed. So that's kind of the path I went. Asheville is a super peaceful place. Miami, I would be afraid because I lived in Miami and I would actually be afraid because people are really kind of aggressive and angry there. So, so like, I would be afraid to kind of advocate for myself in that situation. Yeah, and so. I'm sorry, Jessica said was gonna say something. I'm just, yeah, I'm sorry, Jessica. Oh, it's okay. I was just gonna say, Pauline, if it makes you feel any better, uh, the fact that you didn't advocate makes me feel better because <laughs> if an amazing advocate like you, has times where they're like unsure if they should or should like it just makes me feel better because I've had times where I should have advocated for myself but I didn't so thank you thank you <laughs> I'm glad my weakness can speak to <laughs> I appreciate that Jessica and um and that's why like so like in that instance a zine like I'm having a face-to-face -face conversation and I'm like actually asking the guy i'm like um i i need that spot can we and there's and there's always you know letting the air out of his tires <laughs> <laughs> no i see and then that's not my but i know there's different styles of advocating <laughs> <I'd be, laughs> but, um, but i that's just not my thing but so but like honestly like it, like real talk at, like what what are some things that we could do during those times when we feel paralyzed by our own fear about advocating like for what's right like it's obvious like you do you are legally parked first of all second of all someone is asking like how much clearer can you be yeah i don't know like i don't really know i mean i've had those moments like for instance like i was visiting some friends and they were like, oh, let's go to this restaurant and all the bar table, you know, there was like the, the style of tables that are really high. Not, they were like, they weren't bought a bar, but it's like these style of tables that are really high up. They're not really accessible. And my friend's like, let's go here and eat. And so I'm like, I'm like, okay. And they're all like, sitting these things and I'm like, should I like, say yeah. something? I just didn't because I just wanted to enjoy that moment with my yeah. friend. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it didn't really bother me that much, so I just didn't say anything, but I don't know, it's just like, I think we have to, like, forgive ourselves for those moments, because it's hard to be an activist, and, you know, sometimes, you know, your mental sanity 
is something you need to preserve as well. And I don't know, I could forgive yourself for those moments where you don't act, you know, be an activist, but yeah, it's just hard. It, I don't know. It's hard to be human. <laughs> it's hard to be human and hard. Be Especially when you're faced with it daily. Like if you're, if, well, you know, the, daily, you know, there's always things that are, that you kind of face where you're just like, what the hell? What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? You know? And it's like, I feel like I would just be like angry if I was just like addressing everything that I saw that was like, you know, ableist or like non accessible. It's just, it's, yeah, we, I wish the world would do better, you know? Hard. Honestly, Pauline, if the guy, you actually, you know, told the guy that he, um, you know, you needed the space and explained to him why and he still didn't get it, yeah. I honestly wouldn't have confronted it because if he doesn't get it, then he, and if he's that narcissistic, then he might have done something to you, honestly. That's true. Yeah, that's right. something here that would have been upsetting, mm -hmm. which is kind of even worse. Words like mean words are really damn. Like, I don't know. I get really upset. Well, with and I know <laughs> my husband would probably just throw out the fist at that point if he said yeah. that. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sensitive. Like, I'm super sensitive. Someone, you know, I get upset when, you know, and you hear little, even little things, you know, that might hurt, but, you know, where people just don't think, you know, that it's hard to, um, it's, I guess it's hard for someone who isn't disabled, that doesn't have a disabled friend, you know, to really understand, you know, what it is to be completely, you know, aware of what, what it is we need, you know, and yeah, well, and, but then even when it's expressed, like one time I, there were these guys in their trucks and they were blocking the disabled parking spot. It was open, but they were blocking it to the beach. And so oh. I asked them, I'm like, well, and, and they weren't there. So, well, some of them were hanging out, but some like the owner of the, that particular truck was not there. And so I called the cops and they got in my face about it. And they have this program. I probably have this program the where you guys, there? what? No, not the cops. The guy, like, why are you calling the cops? Oh. Who, what are you doing? Who are you on the phone with? And, and so, and they're like big local guys, like big Samoan wow. guys. And I'm like, um, I, were and, you by like, yourself? No, I was with my family. Um, they dropped oh. me off and went to go park the car farther away. But I felt like this is so not right. So I called the cops, but it's a low priority on the cops. And I don't know about over where you guys are, but they have this volunteer program or people with disabilities to volunteer to give out tickets to people who are parked. Yeah, that's that here now. Really? And I'm like, wow. should I get a volunteer for domestic violence? And like, I don't understand. <laughs> like even that. Then they give that to be a volunteer. Thing. Cops uh, can't kill people. Cops can't kill poor black people. Like, you know, we don't, have volunteers that go around and say that. And then, you know, we are talking about justice reform. So that's why I really oh, oh, this moment because if we're like talking about allocating funds that are given to the cops, then I do feel like there should be a department that's for disability. So like there is a department that deals with the parking issues and you know, because it is illegal for someone to park there. Like, I remember when I was in Asheville, someone actually, there was this parking spot and it had the lines. It was like a street parking and it was, it's really unusual, like, for a parking spot. Someone parked in the lines and I was so, so pissed off because I was like downtown. I'm like, I'm going to put a zine on this person's car. Rrr. Like, I was so angry. And then I actually was rolling and I saw a cop and I was like, hey, there is a person over there parked illegally in the parking. They're parked in the, I was like really upset. So the cop was just like, you know, sympathetic towards me and was just like, where is it? And I was like, right around there, just around the corner. And so he went there and I, I don't know, I didn't really stay to see what he did if he gave a ticket. 
but it felt good to <laughs> run to the cop and I was like, this guy or person is parked over there. So did you, you know, need the spot? Yeah, it was a spot I did, but I fortunately I was with my partner, so you know, it's just like people, you know, like Pauline was with her family, so they could do something about it. But if we are by ourselves, what are we going to do? You know, it's like we are not going to be able to go anywhere. We're just going to mm -hmm. be just going to have to leave and go home. And that's really what it's about. And so that's I'm, not fair. I don't think we should have to do that. Why? Why should we? Why, why should we have to go home? You know, it's not fair. Well, yeah. Well, that's it's, so I, yeah. Okay. Okay. If you guys can get back in your car, because I've had several instances where people are parked in the lines or too close to in the lines, partially in the lines or fully in the lines, and I can't get my ramp out. Yeah, so. yeah, and that happened to me too. Sometimes I'm afraid to park because in those lines, because if mm -hmm. someone doesn't park well on the other side, then you can't you can't get into your car. So yeah, so there's all kinds of these little things that happen that you know people just don't realize so yeah like educating people i i feel mm -hmm. educating is like what i like to do and like mm -hmm. in nashville i've kind of i've given talks about things like this and and that's why i'm kind of doing instagram live stuff because i can't you know i'm i don't know when things are gonna really get back to what we call normal or if it yeah. will be that if our normal is going to be a new normal essentially so you know so i'm just like i'm just like uh going on my instagram live and like i interviewed tylea yesterday and so i just feel like that's how i'm going to educate people and i'm going to i save those videos and like do stuff with it like that and educate people in a different way now because i have you know because which is actually great when you're disabled <laughs> you can actually sit at home and do it you don't have to worry about whether you're for parking and if you're in pain not mm -hmm. to deal with all the moving your body around right and stuff. So, it's hard and it's hard for a lot of us to get out so when we actually do get out and we can't even enjoy ourselves because of parking or any accessibility it's like it's it's such a pain in the ass it's not it's like, this is the first time I've gone out, you know, in a week, you know, or, I mean, I haven't gone out for a while, but I mean, for, it, you know, before, yeah. it's like. People don't really think that, you know, but yeah. I, what Ron says, like, you know, we need, I, and I think I'm going to use this, like, Ron, oh, it's called able body. He said able body people are uh, um, soon to be, or disabled, yeah. like, so. Tabs, temporarily able-bodied. Temporarily able-bodied. It's like, I to yeah, and I love that term, like the temporary able-bodied. And I think, like, as a disabled community, we need to be like, hey, you know, I was talking to this other person, Nick, that takes part of the group sometimes, and actually got interviewed by Pauline, and which I watched Pauline. That was really good. Actually, I like. Um, Mick and I were talking about because we actually watched the Crip Camp webinar last week and they did a really interesting timeline about disability and the disability movement rights and black people's rights and kind of like showed this relation between black people, you know, because a lot of black people during slavery became disabled because of the abuse they suffered and, um, you know, like Harriet Tubman, all these, like a lot of activists were actually disabled and fighting for the rights of black people and kind of talking about how when black people were getting rights, they kind of pushed their disability to this. They didn't talk about their disability as well as being black. They like grabbed onto one, like if they were a writer or an artist or a musician, that's really what they highlighted. They didn't so it's kind of interesting. And then they had a woman at the end. Uh, God, I'm forgetting. I think her name's Anita Connor. I'll figure it out later and let you guys know. But her, she was actually born right before the civil rights movement, civil rights bill was signed, like in 1964. So she was born right before that and was expressing her disappointment how she never really got to take 
she's a black woman with a disability and she never got to take part in the black rights movement and then she joined adapt and she's like and you know took part in the capital crawl and she's like and there were black people there she goes there were black people in adapt and there were black people you know at capital crawl but for some reason they weren't really shown and then um I think a police shooting, I can't for, I feel bad, I can't remember which police shooting happened, but this police shooting happened in 2014. She started speaking out about black rights instead of disability rights and said that she lost a lot of her, like lost her white disabled friends because she was speaking out against. So it's just kind of interesting how these people are fighting for their rights, but race and disability are kind of, you have to pick either or instead of both. But I feel we're in the state where we can discuss it. In intersectionality, I think, is really important in this time. That's my opinion. I think we're in this moment where intersectionality is, you know, because people part of the LGBTQ community can be any race, can be disabled, and people of any race can be disabled, be LGBTQ. You know, it's all overlapping and and you know, I have friends that are part of the LGBTQ community, and they write things like "trans lives matter," and I'll like literally be like "trans trans trans black lives matter," and I'll be like, "trans," I was like "trans disabled black lives matter," and I will write that, and they always thank. They're like, "Thank you, Priya," and, and they're like, "You're welcome." We're all. I just say we're all learning and teaching at the same mm -hmm. time. That's like my friend. And we're all just trying to fight the good fight. We're all trying to fight the good, you know, we're all, you know, it's it, discrimination. It can be against disabilities, black people, you know, I mean, anybody, it, it just, it could be on every level, you know, and like you yeah. said, yeah, how, why do you have to choose? It's like, it's like you either have to choose like which, you know, cause you want to be advocating for. And it's, yeah, so that's which one thing that was like about the history of being black and disabled and you know so i just i don't know and that like i felt like i was being advocated to at that moment because i didn't really think about that and, mm -hmm. you know, as a disabled person so but does anybody else want to talk about uh <laughs> things? i don't know what else to talk about here i got i lost my train so I'm like, um, but yeah, so like, I don't know how we advocate. I mean, protesting is really great, but we can't always as disabled people protest. So yeah, how can exactly. we, we like advocate for ourselves? And I think writing, you know, senators and like going on social media and informing people that way, like, Mm -hmm. You know, like when people are like Black Lives Matter, I tell them, hey, Black Disabled Lives Matter, or mm -hmm. you know, kind of remind them that half, you know, half of the police brutality are people that are disabled. And so you have to think of that as well. You can't just think of race. You have to think of race, you know, how, you have to think of identity as a whole, right? It's mm -hmm. not one thing. I think we're in a society now that we can kind of address identity as more than being one thing. I don't know. What does everyone think about that? I don't know. Well, That's something I, um, I, I don't know about. Sorry. Go ahead, Denise. Who was oh, talking? I was, I was going to say, um, I don't know if um, marching is good, but um, there has to be something more than just marching. You know, like writing a senator, um, talking on social media, like do something to spark change, not just, not just like march in the streets. Yeah, marching in the streets is good, I guess, but you know, do something. Don't just talk about it. You need to do something. Yeah, and that was a mutual compromise. I'm sorry, go ahead. That's so what I get, like, they just march in the street. Well, what does marching do? You know, I mean, 
Well, I don't know. I, I've been listening to the Judy Human biography, and one of the things she said is protesting is good. It is a necessary thing because it does show your politicians that a bunch of people are coming out and being like, hey, we don't want this. But then she said that's half the battle. The other half is legislation and voting. Yeah, voting. voting yeah. Calling your senators. Believe me, politicians, if they think they're not going to get into office, they will either change, do something about it, or they'll lose the election and someone that is in our better interest will get in there. So voting, I think, yeah. of course, is the first and foremost thing. Voting and passing bills and writing bills and, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think, I don't uh, think, it's, um, I think it's simplistic to say it's a political issue. Um, I think it's a human issue. Like in that instance, that was a human to human issue. Yeah. Whoever's in office is not going to affect that guy. Right? right. Right. So it's really about um, empathy and a lack yeah. of empathy in our world. Yeah. No matter who exactly. you are, whether you're a minority or in as a disab disabled person or a nationality or religion or like, we, there's all these differences and I, and I, I, you know what, part of me does feel bad. Like I'm half Filipino and I'm half white. And so I have both in me and I've experienced both cultures so beautifully. And I kind of feel bad for people who are white right now because it's all being placed on them when it's not them as only as individuals. Like, like, I feel like it, we're simplifying it. Like, it's, oh, it's a left or right issue or it's a political issue. Just vote and everything will be better in our world. Mm -hmm. No, it's, I, don't, I don't think that eat at all. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think um, because no matter what, I, and I feel for our politicians and I feel for our cops. Because, <laughs> like, our cops. There yeah. no, there's no way anyone can win once people have already had their mind up. And um, I was watching Ooh. Brene Brown. Do you, are any of, are any of you familiar with Brene Brown? No. She's a um, she's a doc she's a doctor of psychology, and um, she has dedicated her life to understanding um, vulnerability. And in her TED talk, I would highly recommend Brene, B-R-E-N-E, -E, Brown, and just look up Brene Brown and TED talk. It's amazing. And she said, what happens in our world is that we're so afraid of being vulnerable with each other and a way to not be vulnerable, to avoid being vulnerable, is we try to control and we try to make things certain. and She's like, that's why there's no more discourse in politics. It's just left, right. You believe what I do or you don't. And I'm going to unfriend you if you don't believe with what I believe. Right. Mm -hmm. And so because people, vulnerability opens us up to judgment and ridicule and criticism. And none of us want that. But because we don't, we are not willing to embrace that vulnerability um, it actually closes the doors to compassion and closes the doors to gratitude and joy. And so um, I feel like that is <laughs> what's wrong with our world. I don't think it's a political issue at all because pol politics is just people, right? It's, it, pol our political figures are human beings. I agree with that, but now we... I feel like people, when they're given too much power and they feel like they don't have to be accountable for their actions or what they do, then that's where the problem lies. Because they're, then they're not being human. They feel they're like, we're here and they're up here. Mm -hmm. But you know, as protests and things happen, they're coming back down more to like our level. And it would be great if like, the people we vote for could we could have a like what you're saying a human up to human Discord. conversation yeah but that it doesn't always play but out. then it's, I, but then it, out. but then they can go too far like the stuff that's having happening in seattle like right 
the the them just, taking over six blocks of, of downtown Seattle and extorting the people who own businesses there. Like they're making the people that if you, you know, and now the government is like the mayor and the um, the governor are helping them. Oh well, let's let's help create cement blocks so we can help protect you. Like that's right. not okay. Like so you can swing both ways. It's not. It's just not okay because, um, you know, as society, that, we have standards. In that case, for that those people have given been given too much power now over the the six block. You know what I'm saying? Like for some because of what's happening now the power has shifted to these people that are blocking off six blocks of Seattle and extorting the businesses. Right. But they're not, they're given power because we let them. Right. Yeah, I mean, they're not. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. like them getting like Tylea's favorite show is Dukes of Hazard. She wants to ride out in a Dukes of Hazard car on her wedding day and she's half black. Like, and getting rid of Dukes of Hazard is not going to fix our society. Getting ready, getting rid of Aunt Jemima um, syrup yeah, is not going to fix our society. Like this is yeah, ridiculous. And, and tearing, tearing down monuments isn't going to erase history either. There's just going to be, it's crazy. Like, well, and I'm like, well, why are we tearing down? Why don't we build up more monuments? Like, why don't we build up? You don't like, you don't, you don't like um, George Washington, so you tear tear his um, statue down. I mean, what the heck is that? Why are we doing that? You know, like, just because you're not, you're not. Um, you well, and I, I think. It's important to remember context also, like in the Philippines, having a cert, like, you know, Priya and in India, it's the same. Having a servant is normal, but people in the U S you tell them that they're like, what? That's horrible. And like, no, they're grateful. Like that, that's just the way of life there. That's, that's mm -hmm. so yeah. you have to, like culturally look at each context, like that, that time in, you know, different histories of what context was and our cultures, different contexts. Um, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I see what Ivy's typing for those that can't read it. Um, she said, I like that tearing them down. I don't think that we need to have reminders of them as if their achievements, they did some pretty atrocious things to people. Yeah. There's a lot of people that done atrocious things to people. Um, and you know, it was so interesting. Um, we run an Airbnb at our house and we had a couple on their honeymoon and one was from Japan and one was from China. And in World War II, beside the, the like Russia and China were the number one people killed like in the millions in World War II and no one gives thought to that. Japanese took over the Philippines and tortured and put people in concentration camps and my grandfather was one of them in the Philippines. Yeah. And my grandfather was too. And he does. Dad, dad. And Sorry. that couple were like, how does that, like, you rarely see a Japanese and a Chinese together because of the history that was not so long ago. Mm -hmm. um, and they're like, yeah, like they didn't, like, they didn't carry that with them. Like, my grandfather, all, like, a lot of my friends in college were Japanese. Like, he did not, not like them, right? When I'd bring them home for Thanksgiving or whatever. And, He's like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. And, and it, so it was, it, it's just interesting to see how different cultures to handle different things and not denying that they, what they did was bad, but like, I get a little, <laughs> I don't know. I get, I, I get a little like, you have to pay us back. I'm like, I, my family wasn't even in the country when all that <laughs> happened. Like, what do I have? What, what am I doing? What am I apologizing for? Yeah. Am I, you know, so I think it comes down to people going back to the advocacy of people with disabilities. Like in that instant, we, it's about the people. It's about empathy and, and being vulnerable means saying you can, you messed up. Like, oh dude, I am so sorry. And maybe it was just his pride that held him to that parking spot. Right? Like, I don't know what's going on in that guy's head. But yeah. Yeah. 
yeah like where's people's humility like there's no humility anymore you know there's there's no empathy like you said like there's just people I are have to frame things I mean, as, as a community instead of society because i feel like communities like where you live and you know like for you pauline that person that park bear like he's part of your community and he's like he's like and you know i just feel like if you frame it that way but then there are just some people that are just i don't know they're just not they don't care <laughs> so i don't know i mean there's always going to be people like that in the world and you're always going to have to fight that there's always going to be so yeah. like this idea of oh you know like i hear people be like i just think i would be great there was no racism ever existed. I'm like, but is that really going to happen? I, I don't know. It's that. not really. Yeah. Like, yeah. Our rights and, may, you yeah. know, the police department, so, like, so many killings aren't happening. But racism is always going to be there. Ableism, all the isms are going to yeah. always exist. And it's, like, up to us as people that are part of that to kind of be, like, you know, fight, fight a little bit for what – our rights are and we'll always have to fight that it's never gonna be just gone so you know which it would be great if but i don't know would we be humans if we're all like, if we're all that's, like what, that's what would motivate me that's what motivates me to be more of an advocate is that there we are a minority you know the, the, we're a minority and if we don't speak up about us no one else no one is going to you know so it's like it's kind of like I feel like it's like my responsibility to do that, even though I'm not that great at it, but it's in my, in any way I can, I want to advocate, even, even if it's, I'm not addressing someone directly, like, you know, in a, at a parking spot, but I, I still need to, I, it's, I feel like I need to. And yeah, we are, actually, uh, Pauline had it, uh, interviewed Tylea and I was absolutely shocked when she when I was listening to it, the stuff she was doing at school, and I told my partner, I was like, "Can you believe this? This is like this literally happened in the two thousands." Like, and she was like, "You know, and this is a um, you haven't met Tylea Jewel, but she's Tylea is a really really super smart woman, and yeah. act that her education might have been sidetracked if she didn't have a mom that really." for her really she might have not gotten an education gotten to where she wanted to be and like that's really what worries me about the rights like I do you know the police problem I think we should address it and it's just it is something and but you know we also need to edu you need we need to address education and the medical the medical world as well yeah. I mean ableism that world as well like I've Even had doctor, yes. Yes. I, I've had a doctor that told like you know I have this neuropathic pain that I get every other day and I asked this neurologist I was like oh do you know why it's you know I'm just curious because I want to know what's going on in my body like why mm -hmm. there must be a reason that it's something's going on in my body and I figure a doctor would know but they <laughs> don't Instead right of, I don't know. Yeah, they don't know. No. Yeah, and instead of, and doctors have a really hard time admitting and saying, I don't know. They just like, give you medication. Yeah, even if they're wrong. Yeah. If they're wrong. Oh, you're, he said, you're lucky you don't have it every day. And I was just like, I'm not oh. going back to you ever again. And he Two days ago, I had a doctor say, Cause I have, I have a pretty bad bed sore right now. So I sweat, you know, when I'm in pain, so I've been sweating profusely and I'm like, listen, um, this is all signs of autonomic dysreflexia. And I could have a stroke if you don't prescribe me something that's going to control this. And he told me that he, he's never heard, uh, he's never heard of autonomic dysreflexia, uh, causing a stroke, but you know, but he's not a neurologist. That's what he said to me. And I was like, well, just look it up. If you look it up right now, you'll see. Have a 
<laughs> you could Google it. Yeah, exactly. Google That's it. what it's there for. Exactly. And, so yeah. <laughs> there's like advocacy that needs to be done in every every part of our lives, you know. And you know, the medical thing is really so, you know, like me realizing like doctors <laughs> were gonna help me completely. Mm -hmm. Was a real, I don't know. I come from an Indian family, so doctors are like considered gods or something. So, like, I grew up being doctors have the answers if you're, but then you know, my they, well, they didn't really have a cure for rheumatoid arthritis, they just medicated her for the pain, not for the actual disease. But I didn't really realize that till you know, till I had become disabled. Myself, so. Mm. so, yeah, so does anyone have any? Um, you know, doctor things that they've had to deal with. But it's like we have we become the doctors. Like I feel like I know I have to educate my every doctor, and you know, I mean, we've met lots of them. I have to educate them because they don't they don't know, or they think they know and they don't. So that's really frustrating. Really frustrating. Yeah. I think it comes down to like personal responsibility. When my husband got really, really sick, I was like, I think you have meningitis, I think. And the, the doctor, I was like, we need to take you to the ER right now. I think you have meningitis. And the doctor convinced him, no, let the antibiotics, this third try of antibiotics try to work and blah, 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 blah. And um, that's, that's yeah. what happened to my mom. She, um, she took me to the doctor like every day for a week morning and night and um and they sent me home with just antibiotics and she said no you know she's dying and on the last day i think my um my neck got really stiff and i went in and she's like no you have to look at my daughter you know and then they they ordered a spinal tap and said that it was meningitis. Yeah. So you have to be on it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. God. <laughs> As a disabled community, we have to just really know. I mean, I was fortunate because I did my rehab at Shepherd. So they really informed me a lot about bed sores and this and that. And so when I'm going into the doctor, I'm actually very knowledgeable about what I need and don't need. The pain, I didn't, I don't know, Shepard, I, the one thing about Shepard they didn't do, they didn't really talk to me about the neuropathy and spasticity. So when it started happening to me, I just didn't know what it was. And oh. I was kind of the doctor's, but, but they didn't. And they kept medicating me for different things. But, and then finally, at one point, I just had to be like, I'm not taking this anymore. So you, were, you weren't feeling the nerve pain yet because you were so, they had you medicated. But, they didn't tell um, you that. No, I actually didn't have nerve pain in the first about seven years of my injury. Like, for some reason, it kicked in like seven years later. But the first seven years, I just, I just had to deal with the paralyzation. So I was very fortunate that I didn't have the pain because I was doing all these things. And then the pain hit me, and I was like, oh, man, this is pretty fun. Yeah, you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Following, what was your husband um how how does he what was the result oh you're talking um, about... sorry sorry one second um um so he he got a, a parasite that is uh found it here in paradise called rat longworm <laughs> and it went to his brain um and oh. so that caused the meningitis but he just went in and I like insisted like seven in the morning and he was just like, why, why are we rushing? I'm like, I don't know, but my intuition is just screaming, get you to the hospital because it had been 11 days um, untreated with meningitis. And so um, that was just my gut. And I brought him to the ER and he went in and said, I, I need a spinal tap and CAT scan. And they're like, oh, you can just come in here and demand that. And he's like, yes, I have insurance. You can. Yeah, exactly. And so um, they did it. The CAT scan showed nothing. Then they did the spinal tap. And then suddenly it was like quarantining, like 
hazard signs don't enter and i'm okay. sitting there holding my seven-year-old son and i'm like um uh, do i need to leave the room what is happening here uh, so but you know i just feel like um i am never one to trust the doctors i definitely feel personal responsibility and it really wasn't western medicine that eventually helped him get back on track it was eastern holistic medicine that mm -hmm. did and so I just feel like, you know, pretty much like with everything that I, I talk about um, in my life, I, I feel a sense of um, just responsibility. Like it's on me to have to um, say, like say something or, or tell them, no, I think you need to check this or demand, be demanding. Mm -hmm. And I think I wrote in the chat that I think doctors... They feel like because they're so backed up with their credentials and their education that they notice that they know it all, but it's a practice. They call it a practice. Um, yeah, I and said that they are they're just practicing medicine. <laughs> 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 Right, right. And I think it, it's definitely a partnership, right? They, they can suggest something and, and you determine whether or not that works for your body. And right. you can suggest something and hopefully, um, th hopefully they'll listen, right? But I know not all doctors are willing to listen. And I don't know for any of you guys, if you have the ability to say, I need another doctor and make complaints. And I feel like that goes back to the accountability thing like you were talking about, Priya that some people get so much power that they feel like they're no longer accountable to the people. And so yeah. where's the accountability it, unless you sue them? And yeah, that's in the doctor patient situation. I've had doctors where I'm like, you know, like they gave me some medication and it didn't work for me. And I'm like, I'm not going to continue to take a medication if it's not actually doing something. And I guess pe some people just do that because they don't know what <laughs> they just so I'll just they're tell listening. Them. Yeah, they're listening to whatever the doctor says because the doctor's right, you know. Yes, but. so then I tell the doctor and I go back to the doctor, I was like, Oh, the pain's still the whatever, dot dot dot. <laughs> and they'll be like, Well, you didn't want to take that medication. <laughs> wow. Like, if I took it and it helped, I would take it, but if it's not doing anything. And I've said that to doctors, but why should I take it if it's not doing anything? Mm -hmm. it's, and then, well, you have to take it for a couple of months. I was like, I have been taking it for a couple of months. Nothing's mm -hmm. happened. I'm not going to continue to take a medication for no reason. And so I've had doctors like kind of like guilt me because I wouldn't take a medication. And it, yeah, it's a bizarre, but the power, the power thing also comes with a patient doctor relationship as well. Yeah, and, yeah, they have a pretty good power thing over you. I remember my dad, I can't remember what, what he had, but um, they told him to take a medication and he looked at it and said, um, and said, this will make me blind, go blind eventually if I keep on taking it. And he didn't want to take it. So the um, the doctor had authority to call the DMV and said, he won't take this medication. So they stopped his um, license. Um, he, he had to get a whole nother license and and he didn't get in a car accident for like all his life. So he was kind of like, why am I forced to take this medication? And why are you um, stopping my insurance? Cause you know, he had authority to do that, you know? Cause he wouldn't take the medication they prescribed. And wow. it's like, I mean, I just, yeah, because I drive with hand controls. And in the state of North Carolina, when a person with a disability drives, they want to, you know, they want to make sure, like, what's going on with you. And so they had questions like, you know, if you have epilepsy, are you going to have a seizure while you're driving? But, you know, yeah. that wasn't, none of that applied to me. So I had my dog fill it in and fill it out and they were like does she need to you know does she need to like have this reviewed every year and my doctor said yes 
And so then, and I didn't real, you know, she just sent in the paperwork from the doctor's office. So then the next year, North Carolina was like, it's been a year and you have to get this medical, this medical thing, forms filled out again. And I was like, Every why? Year? And I actually called Dude. the state. Like, why oh, do yeah. I have to do this? I already did this last year. Wow. Oh, well, your doctor wrote they you have to get it every year. So then I actually call the practice and I was kind of not into my doc her anyway, because she would I felt like she was a bit ableist, like she would like treat me like I didn't know, you know, like you know, mm -hmm. for my pain, she was giving me birth control. If that helped, it actually made it worse. It's like taking it. She was like, Oh, I just want to let you know if you stop taking this, you could get pregnant. And I was like, yeah, I know. That's not why I was it is a form, That is a form of ableism. It's true. You're right. That's absolutely, it absolutely is. And so I told the doctor, I was like, yeah, I know, but that's not why I was taking the birth control. I was taking it to see if it could manage my pain. And so, so I, so I called the doctor's office and I said, look, I actually like your practice, but I don't want to, I, I, I've seen this other doctor a couple of times who I really liked and she's just very you know she was just very she was an ableist and she you know what like worked with me really well so I was like I'd like to not have her because I think it's actually I I didn't I don't think I used ableist that I feel it's very discriminatory that this doctor wrote I have to get checked out every year I was like I have a spinal injury I don't have ears I don't have any of that stuff so I'm really offended that she wrote that and I want to switch my doctors. This is the last straw with me with her. So there Did you have to take a test every year to prove you could drive again? No, I a test. It was just a medical review of me that I ha that had that had uh, that doesn't filled out every year unless your doctor says it does. Oh, because so standing the in the DMV again decide whether I could drive every year. Yeah, what are they, and what exactly are they testing you for every year? Like, what, what are oh, they, no. what are they? It's for any kind of disability. So if someone uh -huh. has seizures or, you know, whatever, like that is a thing that happens to people, but that wasn't my case. I just had a, I had a support injury. So right. really paralyzation that wasn't going to affect my driving and you know, and, sh and she's a doctor, so she knew that. So she just didn't take it. She wasn't it's, advocating for me as a doctor. Right? Isn't it, it like if, if you're progressive, progressively disabled, that's what they test you for? Like if you're well, getting more? Or, and, you know, different yeah. things. Like I can't really, I don't know, I can't think of any right now. Uh, you know some disabilities you can have a seizure or your your body shakes and it can prevent you from driving well which i understand that as a safety reason but i had a spinal cord injury and i don't have spas i have spasticity but it doesn't cause spasms or anything so there was it, it, the, she just didn't think about it she just checked the box without thinking like no, she doesn't have because you know she did wasn't advocating for me as a medical person, and so I got angry about that. And I called the doctor's office. I said, I find it discriminatory what happened here, and I do not want to see her as a doctor anymore. I'm, I, I, I don't feel like we get along anyway. So I think I should just if I could switch to Doctor Young, I would appreciate it because I think she and Doctor Young has been great. She's like. You know she you know she's not ableist she's totally like listens to me and she's like oh yeah you know you know yeah it's not necessary i understand what you're saying and, i you know. i had that happen to me at the dmv she saw that i couldn't put my hand on my eye very well because um my left hand is kind of um kind of um what's the word it's um it doesn't really work that well mm -hmm. so there's another word but i don't know i forget what that is but anyway 
she saw me put my hand up to cover my left eye and I couldn't do it that good. So she flagged me as an unsafe driver. And I had to take the whole test again. I hate the DMV. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> and it sucks right now even more. I, I would, yeah, I'd, I'd kill myself before I go. <laughs> I hate the DMV. What? Yeah. The DMV is awful. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to just yeah. make note real quick. It's twelve forty-five, so twelve forty-five. Well, sorry, oh. here, here, we're fifteen minutes over. Okay. Just wanted to do a timestamp, but I'll let you know. So yeah, so like my, um, you know, we should like I'll just say my final things like advocacy. It's um, it's a difficult thing. It's a difficult thing to be an advocate for yourself. And there are going to be times where you just don't, you know, because you don't know how it's going to pan out. If you're by yourself or with your husband that might get to a fight or something, you know, you don't, you know, you, like you're managing a bunch of things, not just your disability. You're managing social, whatever, social things and you know, you know how, who you're with and, you know, so there's a lot of things to manage. It's not just about disability. So it's okay if you're not advocating, but you should try to find ways to advocate because I feel, um, this is something I talked to Tylee about when I did my inner, my, I don't like to call it an interview. I like to call it talks. I'm calling it a talks. And you, you should be on it. Talk about something. We'll figure it out okay. later. And you too, Pauline. You too should be on it. But anyway, so um, I feel like if we educate people about disability yeah. or we do it, it will spill into all these different, it'll, it'll spill into the medical world, it'll spill into the police, the justice system and all these things. I, I feel like the more we educate our communities, more, the more people are going to think about it and then you will have people that decide to become a police officer, doctor, or teacher, or assistant that, like, that understands what it is and, you know, is, like, you know, respectful and, you know, respectful to your rights as a person. So I think it's important for us to advocate and educate people about it. But yeah, no, matter matter small, yeah. no matter how small, no matter how small is, exactly, no matter... Even if it's like you're at the grocery store and someone, you know, this happens a lot. Like people, some people will walk all the way around from the deli and hand it to you. And some people will just reach over, which I don't, <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to make, I worked in my life, like, which was like that. So I, I understand. I don't really get mad at people. I always, you know, when people can reach and get it to me, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm Lucky you have, like, there's this one deli, and there was like, this really tall black guy, and he had really long arms, so he would just, like, hand it to me, he could, like, literally almost reach my hand with his arms, and I was, like, told him, man, you're so lucky you have those long arms, you don't have to walk around the deli to pick that stuff to me, and he's, like, laughing, so, you know, I just like to, like, point out things like that to people because I don't think they'd really think about it and when you do it in that friendly like kind of like laughing humorous way people like I think un kind of understand that and then they kind of think about like oh and then when if they when they become disabled or when someone they know becomes disabled which will happen to everybody in the world they will know someone that will be disabled or become disabled themselves then they maybe they'll think about that. You know, they'll think about it more even. And so I don't know. So I just do think it's very important for us to advocate for ourselves, but shouldn't beat ourselves up <laughs> when there there's a moment where we just didn't do it. And you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. So of course you're always like, oh, I should have done this. I should have done. This. I would have said that. I wish I, wish I cursed them out. Yeah, like sometimes there's so much anger too because you're just so upset that you don't even know how to react, you know? 
true. And sometimes you are just really angry about stuff mm-hmm. like so you choose not to advocate because of how angry you are mm-hmm. and to play out. You know, I don't really like to get angry my I mean I don't like to get like angry it. into a fight with someone where they're not no, 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 no. like that's just a useless argument if someone's not really getting it and mm-hmm. it's not really cause like for you Pauline in that moment I just feel like the guy saw you you explained to him and he's just like oh yeah I'll be I'll be five minutes just wait for me yeah. like that conversation wouldn't have gone anywhere he obviously didn't wasn't gonna mm-hmm. understand it yeah. would have been a waste of your time your husband would have gone into and so it would have been this huge thing that wouldn't have led to any change really like yeah. that guy been like, oh, he's just saved this disabled woman. <laughs> and that poor and, and, yeah, and I, I, I figure the sign doesn't say um, on the on the sign it doesn't say you can't park here for five minutes. You know, mm-hmm. if if you're not disabled, you know, but just like they should make it only this. Disabled, no, uh, no other person. Oh. No time is like no time is right. Just not available oh. for any dis- non-disabled person. You know. I mean, I've but, seen accessible parking signs where it says a five hundred dollar charge if you park it. So I think that's like a government way of saying, "Hey, you can't park here if you're not disabled." Basically. For any length of time. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Government doesn't seem to like work that way where they're like, you cannot park here for a second if you're not. If you don't. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think, it, you know, it also, I try to think about, okay, if I'm interacting with this guy, and I'm representing people with disabilities, and this is his first impression. Yeah. I don't want to make it harder for the next person that he's going to interact with who has, may have a disability to be like, oh, those angry disabled people. But I do feel like this conversation um, alone, I feel like has strengthened me a little bit more. And um, I feel like, huh, that happens to me again, maybe I'll, I will be a little bit more bold, you know, like maybe he did need me to see, see how my car operates. Like, oh, look, she actually does need the space for her ramp. Oh, look, she actually has no arms and legs. Oh, look, she's sitting in front of me and speaking with me. And even after he left and we went to the restaurant, we came back, the owner was outside cleaning his bike. And I could have said, hey, you know, just wanted to let you know with one of your customers, this was a situation that we had and it would have been, it'll be great if you maybe advocate with your customers that this is not a loading unloading zone. This is a disabled parking spot. Um, And I could have said that and he would not have, I don't think he would have taken it personally, but um, it would have been one more person I could have touched because he even made a comment. He's like, cool then. I'm like, thanks. And I could have said, <laughs> right, but right. I didn't. So I want to thank you guys for even having this conversation because I feel like I feel strengthened from it. Yay. Good for you, Paul. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, just try as hard as you can, but don't beat yourself up if you don't. Yeah. And, because- you know, you could. You could see that man in the community another time, you know. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> like, remember me? <laughs> remember me? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, I like the way I try to talk about parking and stuff. I say, hey, you know, I need that spot. If I need to go to the grocery store and you park in that spot, that means I can't go to the grocery store. So I try to explain it to people like that. It's like, imagine you went out to go to the grocery store and then you couldn't go shop because someone, because you can't park and get out of your car and, yeah, you know, or get back in your car sometimes for me and Pauline. But, you know, 
so yeah, I, I just think we just need to educate people as much as we can. And, um, that, and you know, with social media, since I'm going on now, you know, that I, you know, joined Crip Chat and I'm doing the Crip Chat <laughs> Instagram, actually going on social media more. So when I see people writing things like, oh, you know, Black Lives Matter, I always am like, don't forget about disabled people. Their lives matter too. And, yeah, and I just politely, well, I just, you know, if I like can get one person at a time, like I look, what, what, why am my, my informant is like, I can inform one people, one person's day. I think my job is done for that day. Mm -hmm. so, you know, do it like one person at a time. If you've already told uh, one person, you don't have to tell the next person, you can take a break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Priya. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you all for showing up. I really appreciate Fine. it. Jewel, I'm so excited. And you were know, it's so nice to meet everybody. And, and Priya, I mean, I've been we've been talking for years. It's so oh, nice to finally see you. For years, so I was like, "Oh, you gotta come to this. You gotta come to this." And, um, and I'm like, "I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm gonna." Yeah. I'm, and Finally, she's I'm dealing with a bed sore that's been difficult. So I was yeah. like, oh, you know, she's always apologized. Like, Don't apologize. You just come when you can come. And and I'm so glad it was today. Yay. I'm so glad, too. I'm so glad. All of, I'm so glad I got to meet all of you. Yeah, all yeah. All just lovely people. And I look forward to all of our conversations because I feel like, like a Paulina said, I, I feel stronger from hearing what everyone had to say. I feel, you know, you feel strength yeah like that you're like you know what i'm gonna next time i'm gonna say something or next time i'm gonna do something about it you know um, yeah and you know uh, I hate quoting judy human but she's such a amazing <laughs> she's such an amazing woman so, but it, i'm just been listening to her book but she just said you know i she talked about how she didn't advocate herself in her jobs like in the government high in government and stuff and um, she just said, you know, I don't feel like I can do it by myself. I feel like I have to be with other people. I can't mm -hmm. do it by myself. And so, you know, why, this is why the Crip Chat is so important because, you know, this is where we can be together and talk about these issues and strengthen each other when we go out into our worlds and have to deal with what we deal with on an everyday basis. So... Yeah, so and we I really do it by ourselves, guys and gals. We just gotta, we gotta be together. We need each other. We really do. We we need each other. I kind of feel like I kind of feel like it's like Native American like type of thinking where it's like next time I'm faced, even though I'm physically by myself, I feel like everybody's spirit is behind me, and I'm just yeah, like yeah. pulling from that right. And so, um, so I think that's what's special about this group and. Um, you know, what, what different, like, I know Crip Camp is having their summer virtual things, but they get their speakers and they're speaking at you. It's not right. interactive. Yeah, that, I actually like, because I took part of this writing group and it was like, and I've taken part of some other things, activist things, and it was more like them saying their things and it wasn't like as interactive as this is, which, which I was just like, I don't like this. Crip Chat is so much better. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna drop mic on that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so together united we stand all that kind of stuff so yeah so, thanks y'all for coming thank really you guys renee and ivy we can't yeah. see your beautiful faces but um I, you know is there anything that you guys want to say before we jump off I don't Nothing of real revelance. They might have gone to the links, but I have enjoyed listening and commenting. Yes, I read your comments and I'm like, oh God, I can't type fast enough to comment to Ivy. But thanks for joining, oh. Ivy. I really appreciate it. And, and Ivy, oh, cool. we should start an art. I was thinking of writing you this today, Ivy. I think we should start an art group where we show each other people our art and stuff, and that would be fun, I think. So I actually have something like that on um, Facebook, but they're people that I'm drawing stuff for. <laughs> okay, yes, cool. We have several artists in the group. Yes, please share them on the, our Facebook Crip Chat um, group if you're not already part of it. Join the Facebook group. Oh, that one's group. like a yeah. the link. Oh, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, ye
Oh, you made that? It's the, yeah, it's paint my stickers. Ooh. My friend gave it to me. That's so cute. That, that is so cool. So that is so cool. I am not an artist, so I will not be showing you anything. <laughs> I am. Um, finished one of my commissions today oh, that looks dope i would love to see it and ivy i know you were working on your photos really quick but uh while you were talking and i don't you said you were a photographer i don't know if you're the one who took those photos but they were really beautiful i like oh, which ones? new photos because Priya uh, the ones that were on my screen yeah those oh. are i mean i took them in the last few days oh, that is awesome oh, well i oh, would listen. please Recent oh my ones. gosh so cute Thank yeah, you. Art is really awesome. Is that your art page, Ivy? This is one of them. I have two okay. drawing pages, and then I have my photography page. Okay, I'll have to. I'll just. I'll just DM. I'm ready wow. Wow. This is for my friend's grand you, party. Art and Oh, oh my gosh! I wish you were here, here and to, uh, we could have a photo shoot here. Because oh I my god, I would love that. Been this a is long my grandma. Time. But I was at this yesterday uh, at the park. Cool. So beautiful. Oh, oh your grandma awesome looking. Thank you. She actually used to do modeling when she was like younger. Wow. Well, I, like, oh, I know all you guys, all your artists, and I know Jewel, you're part of that group too. Please post your zines. Um, I have been encouraging Priya to sell her zines because I think it would be really cool to take a zine and leave it on someone's car. And it's really non-invasive, non-confrontational, and it's a fun way. It's like they're like, "Oh, look, a cartoon! How fun!" And then they like slap in their face, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm learning something. Exactly. <laughs> and I, the thing about my zines is, I feel like the parking zine. I actually even write. I was like, even disabled people don't don't know what the rules about the parking spaces. So yes, I, I I think I write that. I was like. Don't feel bad if you don't know. Even disabled people don't. You know, don't. <laughs> yeah. So um, share them and then definitely. All right. Can disabled people park anywhere besides um red spots? Yeah. I didn't hear me. I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. Um. What? Can disabled People park anywhere besides red spots and besides. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, mean, I know you got that note that one time, but I think that person is that person's wrong. There is no legislation or law for non-disabled people to only be able to for disabled people. There's no legislation saying disabled people cannot park in a spot that's not for disabled people. No. And that'd be ridiculous because no, it assumes there's only be, going to be like that one person. <laughs> yeah. I'm not talking about that note. I'm talking oh. about um, disabled parking in general. Like, where can you not park? Like, I know you can't park in a red zone or uh. near a fire. Well, the red zone is for fire. That's that's not an accessible parking. But really, yeah, the fire uh, and when the red you zone. if you have a lift or a ramp, there's parking spot. Like I'm sure you've seen accessible parking spots, and they have the lines next to them. The reason the lines are there is that's like room they they've marked off for a lift or a ramp to come down. So yeah. For like yeah, me and she's, asking, she's asking, can we park anywhere with a placard? And the answer to that is no. You cannot, like you said, you cannot park in red zones or fire hydrant areas. Loading zones, yellow zones, they are not handicapped zones. Yeah, like, basically, excel. we have to follow the law like everybody else. The only difference is some states yeah. have exemptions for meters. So, oh, um, in so, Asheville, um, if you're disabled, you don't have to pay for the meters, basically. Oh, okay. but not all states mm -hmm. are like that. Hawaii is getting really cool. not like that. Um, it was like that in the Bay Area, and it's like that in Asheville. But some of the store owners are trying to make that not not legal because they don't want a disabled person to park all day in front of their store and prevent customers. But I'm like, it's downtown. It's not. 
Yeah. Well, it's actually not. Actually, I don't think it's stores. I think it's um, government because they get the money from it. So if you're taking oh, yeah. oh, but some stores are like trying to get that yeah. passive able person. Yeah, I, I understand the stores because why would you want someone that's not going to shop there 24-7 yeah, in front of your store? Yeah, the money the government the money the stores aren't getting the money in the meters i think they just don't want you know someone to park there all day and not they let want customers right yeah, so no. denise denise can i ask you do you have a handicap placard yeah okay so like um and i'm sure you're more involved than most people that i meet with handicap placards who don't have a necessary for ramp but like what irks me the most is people with placards who take up spots for within vans. Like, like, and there's oh. spots right across, like just because you have a placard doesn't mean you have to park in a handicapped spot, right? Cause if there's a, a non-handicapped yeah. spot right across the, right like on the other side, but it's not handicapped, like there's nothing preventing you from parking there and oh. you leaving the handicapped accessible spot open for someone that actually needs it for the ramp. And, and when, yeah. When I did my rehab at Shepherd, they were like very clear. They were like, hey, if you're with your partner and you don't you don't really need to park in that accessible spot, leave that open for someone that will need it. You know, yeah. so it's much about it's about community too. The disabled community also needs to watch out for each other. Mm -hmm. And that Thing that's kind of lost in translation somewhere and, yeah you know, I, I thought I thought so entitled, that, um, they have they're like I have a disability placard and they feel entitled mm -hmm. to park in that spot instead of looking at it as like you know I don't really need to park here I can park right over here and it's just as close to the building you know whatever people need for, you know whatever reason you need to park there you know, it's just, it's all about community in the end, right? So. Yeah. Don't the, don't the, um, don't all handicapped places have, like, a cross hatch where you could put your RAM? No, well, or no, it's it... different sizes, Denise. So there's oh, one, the exercises that are smaller. And like my ramp, I, and there's not enough space for my ramp to come down, plus allow me to have space to get my chair out. So um, there are oh. specific spots. But even in that case, someone with a manual chair or a walker who actually needs that four feet or two feet exercise, and, and if you don't, or if someone with a disability doesn't need that, that they really shouldn't park there. Okay. Like placards Thanks are not. Thanks for informing me. I didn't know about that. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I well, we appreciate. Like, I really appreciate what Priya said. Like, it's a community issue, and we should all be looking out for each I, other. Like, we can't ask the able-bodied community what we're not willing to give. So I thought I thought it was one spot fits all. I didn't know if it was like I know. And see, that's like the that's like my issue with get people getting the disabled placards and license plates. I feel like you should have a take a little test. So people know, like, so Denise was uninformed about that. She lives with a disability and she knows me and you, but yeah. now that she knows that she'll be like, Oh, that's lines. That's for people like Priya and, and Pauline because they have lifts or someone with a walker. And I don't know if you use a walker, but well, I, knew, I, I knew it was for someone with a wheelchair. I didn't know it was like a size, size of the um, lines, you know? Mm -hmm. I didn't know there were different size, sizes of like the ramps and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I didn't really know that thing I enabled myself, but yeah, I, you know, I learned a lot when I began to learn a lot. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah so they're like the bigger spaces the bigger line spaces are for vans like with lifts and ramps and then there's some with a little yeah. bit more, and that's like to give people with walkers or wheelchair users too that pull their wheelchair in from 
you know, like they take, you know, some people drive, yeah. they take their, fold their wheelchair and put it in the back and pull it out. So they need that extra space to put their wheelchair yeah. in. And, and it's not that um, drivers add um, handbook either. I know. <laughs> so I'm glad you brought that up. I feel like this information needs, there needs to be a chapter about accessible parking in every yeah. handbook. The DMV sucks, and for that reason as well, they don't have their, they don't people. Yeah, they don't inform people, and you know, if, if they're not informed, you know, they're not going to know, you know. It needs like, to be part of the test. In North Carolina, when I, took, I got my driver's license in North Carolina, I was reading the handbook and I was like, you know, I was studying it. But I was noticed, like, I, I told my partner, I was like, they only, all they say is they're going to charge you money. They're going to charge you money for parking in an accessible spot. They don't, like, explain it. Yeah. it. I feel it's ableist as well, but DMV is ableist. Let's just it say. really is. Yeah, the DMV stuff. Actually, I remember um, when I moved, the year I moved here, I wanted to get my permit. Pennsylvania is backwards as hell as far as driving goes, but that aside. Um, so I was missing some things that I needed, like identification wise. So I was like, okay, um, I'm going to fill out this application and then come back another time. I think we ended up going up there, I don't know, at least five, seven times that year. Because every time we would go, there was something else we didn't have. Mm. But they didn't mention before. And it's not like it's next to my house. It's like a good 15 to 20 minute ride. That's annoying. That yes. is you know what? I, you know what? I think the, that movie um, Zootopia so um, explains how the DMV is. If you've <laughs> never seen that movie, <laughs> Zootopia is like to the teeth. <laughs> the slots are like right on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're so. <laughs> I imagine that's what worth on the death is big slots. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay, guys, it is 111, or 111 here in Hawaii. Renee, we haven't had a chance to hear from you. But I, I, you don't feel, don't feel for a pressure to have to say anything, but I did want to give you. That's okay. We'll come back around to these topics, I'm sure, at some point. Mm -hmm. I, okay. I've got things to say always. <laughs> okay. It's a okay. never-ending never yes. thing. But it was good seeing all of you. I'm so glad yeah. it's all women. That's kind of cool. Yay! Yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> so I'm kind of like, oh, a bunch of women. Yay! So okay, next, because I oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I'm just babbling. Go ahead. Um. So next week, John Wood will be ho guest hosting, and he will be talking about how do we tell our story as a person with a disability? Because John is an author and advocate himself, and so he's always interested in about how do you tell your story, and and he, you know, because he's told his in his book. A fight to survive. So um, he'll be hosting next week's call um, on Crip Chat. So if that interests anybody, um, please come. Invite friends. We want, you know, the more the merrier, I think. Um, I love hearing different people's perspectives. So, um, and Renee, don't be shy. Um, uh, we want to, we want to make sure everyone gets an opportunity to be heard. Okay, uh, me shy. No one's ever accused me of that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I just like I'm not that. <laughs> funny. Okay, That's funny. Awesome. Okay. All right. I'm gonna hit. Um, I'm gonna close this out for now. I'm okay. Gonna... It was really great. Thank you.